Hi everyone, it's Narelle here. Today I want to show you how to import a system font into Cricut Design Space version 2, use the extra glyphs that come with that font, and a few other tricks that help make using system fonts in Design Space a lot easier. So the first thing that we need to do is download our font. So I'm at the fontbundles.net webpage and I'm going to be downloading their free font of the week and this font is called Caitlin. So what I do is I'm go at their page so I go and I look for the download button and in this case it's this big green button that says download for free. So I do that and now I need to tell it where I want to download that. Now I always download my fonts to a a directory that I've created in my downloads folder called fonts. So I'm going to do that so I'll press save and down here on the bottom left corner it's telling me that that font has already been downloaded and all I need to do now is double click on that button there and it will open up this screen here. So I've downloaded the font so the next thing that I need to do is extract that font because it downloads as a zip file and you need to unzip that file so that you can grab the font file itself to be able to use that. So what I've got here are a few files and the one that I'm looking for is this one here which is an OTF file. Now because this is a free font it's only showing the OTF. When you purchase fonts you will usually get an OTF which is an open type font and a TTF which is a true type font. Now both of these fonts work in Cricut Design Space so it really doesn't matter which one you use. In this case because we've only got the OTF that's what we're going to go with. So I'm going to go up here and I'll see this button that says extract all. So I click on that it wants to know where I want to save those extracted files. I'm going to leave it at the default which is um, a subdirectory of the fonts directory that I've previously created and I also want it to show me the files when it's finished extracting them. So with that said I click on the extract button and then I come to this page. So now I have these four files which are the same four files that we saw before but they've now been extracted and can be used. So this one here is the file that I want. I can't use it in Design Space or I can't use it in fact in any program on my computer until I extract it. So what I need to, sorry, until I install that. So what I'm going to do is I can either right click on that file and you'll see an install option there or I can double click on that file and it will bring up the install box. So from here I click install and it's going to install that font into my fonts directory on my hard drive. So now I can close that box because I don't need that anymore and I can get right out of any of these extra things that I've got there. So I'm back to my wind, uh, back to my browser and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into Cricut Design Space. So here I am in Design Space and I'm going to click on the Create New Project button and then Add Text. So I'll type the word that I want to use and I'm just going to use the name of the font. So I'm typing Caitlin and now I go over to the Edit panel and I'm going to change that font to Caitlin. So I'll click on the All Fonts menu and I'm going to select System Fonts and then I'll type in this box here Caitlin or I can start typing Caitlin and it will find that font for me. So I'll click on that and now my text changes to Caitlin. Now it looks a little bit like what we've got here but we do need to do some extra work. So first of all our letters have been separated. They're not welded together like they are in our example here. So in Design Space the way to do that, and I'm just going to enlarge this so you can see, the way to do that is to go over here and we're going to change the letter spacing amount. So we click on the down arrow there and as we're doing that our letters are moving closer together. 
Now some fonts work better than others in Design Space when you do this, but if you get it close to where you want it, the next thing that you would do to make it perfect is you would go over to this button here which is Isolate Letters. So we click on that one and now each of those letters is an individual object. So what I'm going to do is, because I want that T to come over a little bit further, but I didn't want the I to come over any further, that's why I've isolated the letters. So I'm going to select everything up to the T, and then I'll just move that over slightly, so it's going to bring all four of those letters over. Now I also need to do the same thing to the Y, and I want the N to come with it, so I'm selecting both of those and I'll do the same thing and just use the arrows on my keypad to bring that over. So now my letters are closer together. I can select them all and then come back to my layers panel and because they're all individual images now I want to weld them to make them all into one individual word and they'll all cut out without any spaces in between. Now because this is a cursive font all cursive fonts look better if they're welded, so that's what we've done there. So the next thing that I want to do is use some of the glyphs that come with this font. And if we have a look here, you can see that the K looks different to ours, and so does the L and the N. So let's go and see how we can do that. Now I can use the Windows character map to do this, but I prefer using a program called Nexus Font. And the reason for that is that the previews in Nexus Font are much bigger than those that you'll see in the Windows character map. So this is the Nexus Font window, and when you open it, it loads up all of the fonts that you've got installed on your computer. So what I need to do is go and find the one that I want to use. So I'm just going to start typing Caitlin in this box and this is the one that I want. So I click on this one, so I put a tick in that little box there, and then I'm going to go up to this button here, which is the character map for Nexus font. So I click on that, and what you'll see here are all the characters that are in that font. Now this is showing all the characters, but the ones that we're usually wanting to use are the ones that are in the private use area. So I click on that menu there, and what you'll see now are just those all those extra glyphs that I want to use. So the first one I want is the capital K because it's the one that we see here. So I'll go back to here and to use that what I need to do is either double click on that letter or I can click once and then click the select button. So either way, regardless of which one I use, when I do that, that K is going to show up in this little box here. Now to use that, what I need to do is drag my mouse over that and select copy. And that's going to copy the code for that letter to my clipboard. So now I'll go back to Design Space and I'm going to double click on the text that I've written and because I've actually welded that I can't go and edit that text so that's something that you need to remember once you've welded text you can't change it now I haven't left this file or I haven't exited out of this file so that means that I can still use the undo button and I can go back and I can unweld that but because I've also isolated those letters, I still can't edit them. So what I'm actually going to do is we'll delete that. I'll go add text and I'm just going to type that again. Okay, so let's make that a bit bigger. Now, yes, I've got all the spaces in between, but I'm going to show you something later that's going to um, fix all of those for me. So what I want to do is change this K. So I'm going to double click on that word and then I'm going to go over that K and I'm going to delete it. And then because I've copied that other K onto my clipboard, I'm going to go control V and paste that into here and I now have that K that I was after. 
So the next letter that I want to change is the L. So I'll go back to Nexus font. I'm going to delete the K out of that box and then I'm going to find that L. There are three of three different versions of that L in the private use area and the one that I want is this one here. So I'll double click that. It's going to add it into this box here. I'll select that and press copy. Go back to design space. Open up my text box again and I'm going to get rid of that L. I'll select control V and now it puts that L in there. The other one that I wanted to change was the N. So let's go back to Nexus font and we'll find that N. So let's use this one here. Now in this box here, because I didn't delete the L that was previously there, it stays there so I can just go in there and I can get rid of that. Select that, press copy, go back to here, get rid of the N or I can just highlight that and then paste over the top of that. And now I've got the K, the L and the N which are some of the alternate glyphs. So it doesn't look very good at this stage. So what I would need to do would be to go back and do what I showed you previously. I would be using the, going to edit and using the letter spacing option to move those closer. But you can see once I get to the I overlapping, the T still doesn't, I can go a little bit further to get that T to overlap. But all of this is still far to uh, too far to the right and my Y has gone too far across the L. So that's where you need to isolate the letters and then start moving those individually. And that does become complicated sometimes with getting things to look just right. So what I'm going to do now is show you another way to do this that's a lot easier. Now this was a program that was brought to my attention by Kay Hall from the Clever Someday blog and I suggest you go and have a good look at her blog because she had some really good information there for using different programs with Design Space. So what I'm going to do now is I shall go here. Now the program that I'm using is called Font Lab Pad. Now the first thing I need to do is go to file and I'm going to open an installed font. So what it's doing is it's showing me all of the fonts that I've got installed on my computer at the moment. I'll type in here the one that I'm after which is Caitlin and here we go here so I'll double click that and now what it's done is it's typed some text in there in the in the font that I'm after. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to type Caitlin. Now again, it's just used the regular letters. It hasn't used the glyphs, but I, ga I can also go and use the glyphs in this program as well. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll get rid of that N. I'll go back to Nexus font and I've already still got it there. So I'll just select that again and select copy and paste. So you can use Nexus font with font lab pad as well. Now let's get rid of this K and bring in that other one. So I need the capital K. I'll just get rid of that first. Select that one. Copy that to the clipboard and bring that one in here with a control V. So that's the K. The other one that we were going to change is the L. I'll get rid of that L. Go back in here select the L and I only want to copy that L. I can leave that K. Okay? I don't have to delete it. I'm just going to highlight the L that I put in there, copy that, come back in here and paste that. So there's Caitlin there and it looks a lot more like the version that's at the, the Font Bundles website. So we'll look at that one and then look at this one. 
and they're basically the same. So what I need to do now is get this into Cricut Design Space. So to do that I need to save it as an SVG. So I can click on this little down arrow here and I can select Save As or I can just click on this arrow button and it will do the same thing. So it's going to, it already knows that I'm going to be saving it as an SVG so I'll give it a name. Let's call it Caitlin2 because I've already saved it earlier. I'll select Save and then I'm going back to Design Space. So let's move this one out of the way. So what I'm going to do is click on Upload Images and the blue Upload Image button then Browse and I'm going to insert or upload that, that file that I just created and that's this one here called Caitlin2. So I'll double click on that and I'll see the preview of that here. So now I click Save and you'll see that there as part of the uploaded images library. So I'm going to click on that one and select Insert Images. So there's our word Caitlin and there's only one last thing that we need to do that to do to that and that's fix this little problem here where we've got this funny sort of outline. Now the reason for that is if you look over in the layers panel each of those letters has come in as individual images so all I need to do now is with that selected click weld and there's our text that looks just right. So now if we compare that to what we've got over here at the font site it's almost exactly the same so one difference there that I can see is that it's a different L that I've used and if I actually go to uh, Nexus font I can see that I've actually used this L here whereas the one that I actually should have used to get ex looking exactly the same as the one on the font bundle site would have been this one here. So that's just a matter of, of selecting the correct font when you go and do that. So there's a few things that you can do to use system fonts within Design Space. I hope that it helps and I will see you again next time.